I was just consulting with George on how to raise this. <laughs> I could carry it around because I tend to move, but I will try not to. Okay. Um, good evening. Thank you so much for coming out. I am here tonight to talk to you about um, my research that I've conducted with a wonderful team of doctoral students and community members through the past more than a decade, which is hard to believe. Um, so the title of my talk is Overcoming Adversities Using Things My Grandmother Told Me, Cultural Values and Resilience in Latinx Individuals. And there it is again. <laughs> All right. Um, so first off, why Latinx population? Um, other than my own personal interest in my own heritage, um, Latinx folks are the largest minoritized group in the nation, um, currently at 59.87 million, and more so in California. We're at 39% pretty much right now, which is more than, quote, non-Hispanic whites. Um, our population is projected to double in size by 2050. So as um, Dean Milan referred to at the beginning, um, this is an important uh, topic to be discussing. Uh, Mexican Americans are the largest subgroup within the Latinx population in the US. Um, and we know that many adversities in this day and time, both economic, political, et cetera, et cetera, are faced um, by this group of folks. Um, so we need to understand the strengths for overcoming these adversities because we also know that many Latinx individuals are incredibly resilient. Why resilience and thriving? And when I talk about resilience and thriving, I'm talking about the ability to overcome adversities um, or perhaps even proclaim that one is better off after experiencing an adversity. That's actually how we got into thriving research from resilience research was the incredible stories that people would say, oh no, I'm not just back to normal. I'm actually you know, glad I went through this thing because I'm better off. What an attitude, right? So um, resilience and thriving have been li linked to many really good outcomes, such as self-efficacy, sense of mastery, or feeling that you can handle certain topics and areas, um, meaningful interpersonal relationships, the ability to make meaning of life events, which you don't, as a psychologist, we don't want to underestimate that one. Having meaning is very, very important in life. Without meaning, um, we can suffer a lot of um, non-well-being. Self-awareness, better academic performance, and even things like greater physical health. Um, what does culture, and my grandmother, have to do with any of this? Uh, so cultural values specifically, or the things that are passed down in families through generations that you may very well hear at your dinner table from your grandmother, um, have been linked to things like increased academic engagement, also, so you see a, a similar outcome there, pro-social behaviors, help-seeking behaviors. And now, um, through some of the research that we've been doing in the past decades and that others have been doing to resilience and thriving. So through things such as Latinx cultural values of familismo, and I do wanna pause and just say that um, we're very aware that Latinx is an umbrella term created specifically in this nation, used in this nation, and that cultures in, for example, Argentina versus Mexico or Cuba are very, very different. And so um, the literature contends, continues to sometimes use this umbrella term. However, we recognize the importance of, when we're studying culture, looking at specific subcultures. Um, so familismo is this idea of family first. Respecto, the idea that when you are in a relationship with someone, respect is of the utmost importance. Um, religiosidad, uh, so this isn't just formal religiosity, but also spiritual beliefs that one may have, which are related to that idea of meaning. Machismo, and when we talk about machismo, which is sort of stereotypically been seen as a negative thing, um, more recent findings have talked about things like caballerismo, um, which are the good parts or the better parts of machismo in the sense of caring for one's family, taking responsibility, attending to matters that need to be attended to. Uh, the sort of female counterpart is marianismo, so modeled after the idea of the Virgin Mary, and the parts of that that seem to correlate with resilience um, are things, again, such as taking care of one's family, being nurturing, being caring, being attentive. Uh, we know ethnic and cultural pride, 
our very strong um, Latinx cultural values, a sense of where one comes from, and also perseverance. So you will see in a moment some demonstrations of how this is talked about. Okay, so all in all, hopefully you're getting the picture that the positive cultural values that many of us have, and specifically what we're looking at today is within the Latinx population, and predominantly Mexican American, because most of our research is taking place here in California where the largest subgroup is Mexican American, um, equal resilience. We found this consistently throughout different ways of studying uh, these phenomena, so whether that's talking to people through interviews or actually doing some statistical stuff, um, we found all the methods have shown uh, very similar things, that there is a relationship here. So um, just to share a little bit with you, so for example, participants in interviews that we have conducted in one study where we conducted interviews with Mexican and Mexican American college students, we heard things like, and I want you to see if you can identify some cultural values here. Being Mexican, when I have a personal problem, I talk to family and they give me advice. Their advice is very important, and I value it above friends' opinions. Getting some ideas? Okay. Um, another one, to be Mexican-American is to know there are many problems in this world, but no matter what, to never falter and to keep going. In my family, even if we can't walk, we find a way to crawl. Some perseverance. Okay. All right. So um, lest we think that we're just sort of collecting these stories to marvel at them here tonight, um, I wanna to talk about how we actually use some of this information to, in a very applied way, out in communities to help solve community problems in conjunction and collaboration with community members. This is a very, very important part of the work we do. Um, many times our research questions are in fact shaped by community members, as was referred to by Diana earlier, um, this idea of community-based participatory research. So we apply the research. One example I just wanted to share briefly with you in the time we have left is the Santa Barbara Wellness Project. This was a project that was formed out of um, uh, faculty, students, clergy, mental health professionals in town um, who came together after an unfortunate incident in our, or set of incidents in our community in 2009 where um, several Latino young men, teens, took their lives and the uh, community was very alarmed and we needed to do something about it. Um, one of the things that grew out of this was the Santa Barbara Response Network, which some of you may have heard of. It's a crisis response. And then some of us also thought it was equally important to have some prevention aspects. So um, we all create, came together and created a program collaboratively targeting general wellness skills, things such as communication, problem solving, relaxation, mindfulness, um, all through the lens of ethnic identity building. Um, we do have a train the trainer model, so yes, if this sounds interesting to you, you can please come talk to me and you can help us. Um, we used to be much more specifically focused on suicide prevention, but as the decade has gone by, we've kind of morphed through response from community into a, a bit more of a general um, program. Thus far, we've trained over 500 youth and participants and parents and mental health professionals, and we're kind of a word of mouth um, group. Uh, we continue to do self-evaluation <coughs> focus groups. Now we're trying to do a little bit more elaborate pre-post test, which is not easy when you're doing community work. Um, and we continue to develop our program. You can check us out at this website here that you see on the screen. And I want to thank you very much. Gracias. Thank you.